at all. Assignments 8 9. Assignments 8 9. Not chapters 8 9. Relax. Wow. All right. Yeah. No, I want you to be publicly humiliated in front of everybody. All right. First of all, I'm not going to do 5-6 at all because that's in the book. Just don't forget when you do 5-6, oh, Tingy likes it when I have this thing because then I stay in one spot right here. Anyway, um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I can't do it. Um, anyway, what was I talking about before I started abusing Ting? Oh, yeah, 5-6, I'm not going to do It's in the book. But remember, when you get that force, remember... Work equals force times distance, but it's the parallel force. So you got to do that cosine one more time on that guy. And this equals our change in kinetic energy. The work in the system equals the change in kinetic energy. And here's the next thing. If it's conserved, and Rashonda just asked the, the million dollar question like on the roller coaster problem. Is there any friction on this thing? No. There's no friction on that thing. So it's conserved. If it's conserved, then E naught equals E final. And we have 1 half MV naught squared plus MGH naught. Here's the, here's the big idea. This and this and 1 half KX squared equals 1 are the two big ideas in chapter 5. Everything boils down to either this or this, or we actually say um, the energy, the change in energy in the system equals the change in kinetic energy in a system, those kinds of things. Every problem boils down to one of those in chapter 5, okay? Every one of them. All right. Because we don't even do non-conservative forces all that much. The thing. And then last but not least, they always throw in the power. And power, average power, is just the amount of joules per second that you use. Okay, so if you want to find the average power of something, you figure out its energy that it used. Like if it goes from zero to uh, 70 kilometers per hour, first of all, you've got to change that kilometers per hour to meters per second, right? And um, after you change it to meters per second, then you know that the change in kinetic energy went from zero. It is warm in here, isn't it? Yeah, she's got her little faith fan going there. But anyway, it goes from uh, zero to the final velocity, uh, um, which would be its change in kinetic energy, would just be its final kinetic energy, which is right here. And if it's all on a flat ground, that goes away. If there's no spring that it runs into, that goes away. So. These guys go away, so the change in kinetic energy is equal to the energy that it has. And if it did it in a certain amount of seconds, you just take this guy, divide it by seconds, and you got watts. You take the watts, divide it by 746, you got horsepower. Or if you take the horsepower and multiply it by 746, you got watts. All right? And some of you are going, well, I wish I'd have known that this weekend, but... Anyway, all right. Okay, so that's, now, none of those are on the test. So there's five minutes of your life you won't get back, but if you haven't finished the homework, you can go back and look at it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do homework 10. Here's the, here's the plan of attack for today. We'll do homework, all the homework 10 today, all right? I'll flash it on the screen. First of all, i gotta, I got to log in so I can find the problems. And uh, log in to good old Mastering Physics here. The one thing I do like about mastering physics over some other things that I've used in the past is that it, um, in the past I've had things where mastering physics at least will tell you what you're doing wrong. Like it'll say, hey, it's a negative. Put a negative in there. And you can slap a negative. Some of the others didn't do that. Or, or if you were off by um, three sig figs and, and your last sig fig was wrong. The other one would throw it out. It was just terrible. It was awful. So anyway, and plus, 
it would, the one time I tried to use it to do a test, in other words, you could just stay at home and do the test on the thing. We could do that with Mastering Physics. If you, would you all want to do that? Try that once? If I could load a test and give you like three hours to do it, and you could do it at home on Mastering Physics, would that be something? Would we want to try? Don's like, no, no. I want paper. I want it, I want it turned in, and I don't want it saying, you're wrong, after I submit my answer. Try again. No, I'd turn that off. You would just turn it in. And, but the problem is I don't get to see your thing. Yes, Rashonda. Would it be part, like, would it be partial credit? See, that's the problem. I wouldn't see what you were thinking. Right, no. Yeah, <laughs> then, nip. Okay, that's what I thought. All right. <laughs> yeah, they just turn that off, and you got three hours to do it. I tried that once, and uh, uh, oh my gosh, uh, uh sorry, <laughs> so, something's not working. I every nobody signed up for physics two ten B when they did the homework. Which is kind of funny um, because uh, I didn't um, put it in, but, or, or I gave you the on the syllabus, y'all. So everybody s signed up in the 210A for the homework assignment, which is fine; it's no big deal. Um, but I, but I went in there to start loading your scores, and I started to get a headache, and I said, "Forget it." But I will get it done. I will get it done. I'm like, "Oh my gosh!" And every assignment I give them, it's going to get worse. Um, and I got to give it to Song, and he's going to get, oh, this is going to be bad. All right, but that's all right. We'll get through it. Now, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to erase the board so I don't have to keep going. Eh, eh, eh. And we'll put the, uh, we'll put the uh, first, here's the first problem, which is, this is going to be kind of silly because the problem is I've already answered them. So some of them, all right? Some of them I haven't. All right, first of all, is momentum. Oh, let's turn it on. And I'll hide behind here and just stay in one spot. For the millions of viewers at home, I can't even walk around my price chopper now without people saying, hey, that's all you're doing. I didn't know what you were doing. I said, well, needed people sitting out there, so it don't matter. Uh, no. That's not true. You guys are doing good. You just don't know it. All right. Here we go. Multiple choice. Here goes question one. Can we, can we kind of see it? Is it okay? Yeah. That's not bad. All right. So linear momentum. What is it? Let me hide this. <laughs> Which is it? Vector. It's a vector, right? Because it's a velocity, right? It's a velocity. Well, that was kind of silly. Difficulty four, that was supposed to be a hard one. We knew that. All right, here comes question number two. All right, question number two says this. It's kind of like this. It says, I can't remember what it says. So I got it. I'll call it up. Here we go. Let's go to the next one. Boing. Whoops, I got that one correct too. A change of momentum requires which of the following? Well, if it's going to change, first of all, it can change mass, I guess. A Something you could it, like you you could change your momentum if you're going along and all of a sudden you were carrying a big ball and you threw it off to the side, you'd change the momentum of you, but the system would actually stay the same. If you threw it this way, um, oh by the way, with this whole momentum thing, let's say you're out in deep space, you're doing and you're you're working on the Hubble spacecraft, all right, and all of a sudden your lifeline breaks from the shuttle. But you got your wrench in your hand. What can you do? Throw in the opposite direction. And you'll float back to the shuttle. Guaranteed. Don't try it, though. Um, I don't know if they'll let you back in, though, because they probably don't want to open the door. That would cause a problem. All right? Um, so anyway, all right, so a change of momentum requires which of the following? All of these, because you could change velocity. An unbalanced force, also known as a net force. I like using the term net force if it's an unbalanced force. Unbalanced sounds like it's deranged in some way. It's just a net force. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Hopefully this one's not answered. Oh, shoot. 
Darn it. It is. Well, this isn't too hard. Find the magnitude of the linear momentum of 6.9 kilogram bowling ball traveling along at 12 meters per second. What's the formula for linear momentum? Mass times what? Velocity. What do we have there? A mass and a velocity. Whoo! That was hard. All right. And then um, find the magnitude of the linear momentum of 1,100. What's the only tricky part about this one? Yeah, converting the 100 kilometers per hour to um, meters per second. No biggie. Multiply by 1,000, divide by 3,600, or 10 over 36, which if you, 10 over 36 is 2 is 5. If you divide by 2, you get 5. You, it's 5 eighteenths, is that right? 10 over 36 is 5 eighteenths. Is that right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, or just multiply by 1,000 and divide by 3,600. What's that? Yeah, it's... it's okay, all right, there we go. Let's, let's do Rachel's theorem, 0. 0.278. Just multiply, whatever you get this, multiply by 0. 0.278. Or two sig figs would be 0. 0.28, right? I, remember, I don't know how to do sig figs, so don't trust me. All right, and then this is the 1,100 kilogram. All right, we need to move on because we got to also review for the test. All right, four, a 56 kilogram driver sits in her car. Oh, good, I didn't answer any of these. All right, this is going to be a challenge because what we're going to, all right, so it's 5,600 kilograms. All right, I'm just going to work in this lighted space right here like a magic board. All right, and another car hits her from behind in a head-on rear-end collision. So in other words, head-on from the car that hit her from behind hits her in the rear. Because that sounded funny to me when I first read it. How can you have a head-on rear-end collision? Anyway, and her car suddenly receives an acceleration of 13 meters per second squared. Huh. An acceleration and a mass. What do those two things put together make? A force. So there's the force, and we want to find the impulse. What did we say impulse was? Remember? Remember? Anyone? Bueller? Anyone? It was the average force times what? Yeah, the, the time of the impact. All right, so this, this is actually a rather slow collision that takes place because there's crumpling that takes, that's going on, lots of loss of energy. By the way, if that car smacks into it and they stick together, what kind of collision is that? Elastic or inelastic? Inelastic. Is the, con is the kinetic energy conserved in an inelastic collision? No. It's only conserved in an elastic collision. So, let's say like on Thursday evening you're taking some physics test. Just say, for example. All right? And there's an inelastic collision takes place and you're asked... Is the kinetic energy conserved? What are you going to say? No. no. What, but what if you're asked to show that it isn't conserved? What would you do? Hmm. Yeah. That's what I thought. Well, what's kinetic energy? What's your formula for kinetic energy? One half mv squared. So what you would do is you'd show the one half mv squared. Is this showing up at all on the TV screen when I write on this? Really? Too fetty. Good. All right. So you got one half mv naught squared that happens before. Does that equal the one half mv final squared that happens after? That's the way you'd have to see. Oh, yeah. In this case, no. It probably won't be. Probably won't be. Oh, but anyway. So we got this force. So that's an unrelated issue. But that was kind of helping us review for the exam. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this real quick. So you got i equals f f of t, and um, so we've got a mass times an acceleration, we've got a time, so we go m a times delta t. There you go. That's what you'd put in here, whatever number you get when you get done doing that. And then it says, what's the force? Oh, here's the force, is the 56 times 13. There's the force. 
That's the average force. Hey, we're done. It's 560, 710-ish, 720-ish about for the force. 728, let's see. 730, Submit. Correct. However, you didn't round correct me. All right. And then this one, I'm going to take that 730 and multiply it by point. Oh, I can't do that. Yeah, if someone multiply that by point 0.3, what do we get? 210? 220? 220 impulses? Yeah, there we go. Whatever an impulse is. What's impulse? Newton seconds. Newton seconds. All right, cool. Now remember, your numbers will change to protect the innocent. All right, let's go to the next screen. Dun, 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 dun. When tossed up, oh, y'all's favorite type of problems. When tossed upward, when tossed upward, we're throwing a ball up. But you know what? We don't care in this problem because we're throwing it up and then we're going to hit it horizontally. So does it, so its momentum on its up and down, does that add it all to the horizontal momentum? No, it doesn't. The only momentum we care about is we're going to send it off into never, never land. Oh, it's got an impulse. We want to find its velocity. Okay, so it's got an impulse. We know this. We know that impulse is equal to the change in kinetic energy. All right. So the only change in kinetic, or, or not change in kinetic, that was way wrong. That was wrong. I'm sorry. And this doesn't even make sense. This makes sense which equals m times the uh, um, vf minus v naught. There. Whew. Dodge that bullet. There we go. Hey, look what we got. What's its initial velocity in the x direction? Zero. And then it gets whacked by that bat, and then it'll have a final velocity. Okay. And in the y direction, we threw it up with an initial velocity, and then it came back down, and then we whacked it. So the before and after is not the same. Right? So, the, so the momentum's not conserved. Because all of a sudden, we introduced a new force, a bat whacking it that wasn't there before. Okay. All right. So that's not too bad. That's kind of nice and easy. So basically, you get, you get I over M equals your velocity because this guy's zero. All right. Let's take a look at the next one. Six. Don't you wish this was this easy on Sunday when you're trying to get that homework done? All right. Okay. Now, what is the average force? Oh, once again. Okay. So, the change in velocity is this. It goes from 15 to 0. All right, so it goes from 15 to 0. So we could make that, but since the, it's a vector and the 15 is going down, it's 0 minus a negative. So we'll just say it's positive 15. Okay, and the force, remember, the average force times delta T equals the mass times the V final, since V naught equals 0 for this case. Okay. So, can we find the force? If they give us delta T? Yeah. They gave us M. They gave you the final velocity. And they give you delta T. So the force will just equal MV final divided by delta T. And what happens when this delta T gets really small? Oh, you can't see it all. Oh, this is really annoying. These screens, so you have to do this. This is what I do. I know there's a way to hit large screen, but then I don't know how to go back to small screen or something. It's really frustrating. So what is the average force exerted by the fist on the board if it's allowed? 2.9, by the way, that's milliseconds. 
can't see that, that's milliseconds. So that's 2.9 times 10 to the negative 3 seconds. So it's really small. So if you divide by something really small, which is what we're doing here, if you've got uh, F or MV divided by a delta T that gets really, as this gets really, really small, this, M, this, this whole entity gets really, really big. It turns into a big force. So if you stop abruptly, you increase the uh, force quite a bit instead of following through. Okay. All right. Let's go on to the next one. Let me see if I can get back, go backwards. Oh, I can't. What? Oh, okay, there we go. All right. Seven. Oh, I love this problem. Oops. I already gave the correct answer to mine. Sorry. But this is a lot like the second problem, the fourth part of the second problem on your first test, adding vectors. All right, so we've got a cherry bomb. It explodes into three pieces of equal mass. Okay, so here we go. We've got this cherry bomb like this. Uh, that's not very good. Pretend those are equal pieces, all right? Let's do it this way. No. Oh, 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 I know what I want to do. There we go. There we go. That'll work. All right, now. Boom. One of them goes flying off this way um, at 15 meters per second. One of them goes flying this way. This guy goes flying this way at 8, negative 4. Whoops. Yeah, that'd be about right. So it'd be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4. Whoosh. Like that. And this 15 would have to be much bigger. Like that. All right, now. We want to know which way, what this guy did to make these two vectors equal what? Zero. Why zero? Why are we saying that just besides your intuition that, yeah, to solve this problem, it's got to add up to zero. What's the center of mass? What's the velocity of the center of mass of this thing before it blows up? Zero. What's going to be the velocity of its center of mass after it blows up? Zero. The center of mass of something doesn't change. It's, it's, it's. Its velocity won't change. So, here's what I've got. I've got V1 equals 8x hat plus 0y hat. I've got V2 equals, oh, no, 15, sorry, 15x hat. This is at 8x hat minus 4y hat. V3 is going to have to equal something so that all this adds up to 0. What should it be without looking to the right? Yeah, negative 23 and 4, right? Because 15 and 8 is positive 23. So if he goes negative 23, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15, 15. and then positive 4, I add up those two vectors. In other words, if I put this one down here like that, and bring him back to zero, it looked just like that vector. So he's got to be negative 23x plus 4y. And that's what I put in here, negative 23 and plus 4. So far, pretty straightforward problems. And it's getting cooler in here, finally. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh. This is the second. Usually I get one cold a winter. I'm on my second one. We're not even to Halloween yet. This is terrible. Terrible. Oh, what I did, and you millions out there at TV land will be proud of me. Um, I did run the, the waddle, as I called it, the waddle and plead um, 
Waddell and Reed half marathon um, Saturday. We finished. <coughs> it made me sick, but that's okay. Because it, when you work out too hard like that, sometimes your immune system goes way down. Just ask any athlete at the beginning of the season, they're sick after the first week of practice. Okay. Now. Oh. Oh, wow. We already did this problem. This is a cool problem. I love this problem. This is a nice little problem. All right. Got a point, one point, uh, 12 kilogram or uh, mass of 1 equals 0 0.012 kilograms. Its velocity, its initial velocity for 1 is 400 meters per second. The key to these problems, what happens before? In the x direction equals the momentum afterwards. And momentum is mass times velocity of all of the things that are moving or the things that are stationary, too. But if they have no velocity, then their momentum is zero. Okay? All right. Now, this bullet goes through here. Before it, it's going through there, it's going at 400 meters per second. And then afterwards, I want to make everything go this way so I've got all positive numbers. And then it slows down to 100 meters per second. But here's how you do this. You just go, okay, M1 V1 naught plus M2 V2 naught, the initial velocity, okay? Which they, we could put the numbers in later. Equals... M1 V1 final plus M2 V2 final. All right. First of all, what's M2 V2 not here? What's the initial velocity of the big block? Zero. So, what's its momentum? Zero. He's zero. So, I got a number for him, a number for him, a number for him, a number for him, and a number for him. The only variable I don't know is that one. Pretty easy. Pretty easy. Because I basically want to, oh, and he's, four, he's M1 times 400 equals M1 times 300. I subtract those two. I get M1 times 100. And then just divide it by the three kilogram block. And I've got my answer. So, so you can f just finish the algebra there. And it was all in the x direction. Nothing changed. I think the next one, they throw a curveball at us. Not literally a curveball, but this type of problem. Doing, oh, I want to go back to this one first. So let's go back. Now, you're not going to have... <clears throat> by the way, could we test to see if the kinetic energy was conserved here? How would we test that? Yes, we would do, let's see if the kinetic energy before equals the kinetic energy after. Final. Does your book, you, does you, does your book just use K for kinetic energy? And U for potential energy, right? Darn. Okay. I'm, okay. I got so used to over the years of using kinetic KE for kinetic. All right. So you just do one half. M1 V1 naught squared, does that equal 1 half M1 V1 final squared plus 1 half M2 V2 final squared? That's the question. I don't know if, I, I don't think so in this case. I think it's inelastic because it took a while for that bullet to burrow through that guy. So it's an inelastic collision. Now, the strange thing, if you start shooting gold protons at real thin pieces of silver, as they found out, this is when quantum mechanics was born, they'd fired at a thing, and they were expecting something like this to happen. But what happened was those little protons came flying back at twice the speed. They went, that violates all the rules of momentum. 
or all the Newton's laws. Oop, better come up with some new laws. Then. All right, and thus quantum mechanics was born. All right, all this kind of blows up, but it becomes probabilities then. Some of them went where they thought they should go, but then some of them didn't. All right. <clears throat> Okay, so there's that one. All right, so now let's go to the one that's kind of nasty, but it's really not too bad. It's this one. This is okay because, again, what we do is you look at, we'll look at P, the P of X situation, and then we'll look at the P of Y situation. Okay? So it says two balls approach, and they smash into each other like that. I was getting ready to do something silly like this so you could see it, but that doesn't do any good, does it? That's, sorry. Okay, but for me to be able to, so this would be the y part. So the x part, so if we're looking at the x part, then we've got m1, v1 naught plus. Now, what's, what's this m2 that's right here? What's its velocity in the x direction? The big M. Zero. It's zero. Plus zero equals, well, it looks like they're stuck together here and they're taking off in one. So what kind of collision is this? It's an inelastic collision. So we've got M1 plus M2 times V in the X direction. Oh, wow. That's not bad at all because look what they're asking you to do. Find VX and VY. I think we can find Vx not pretty. This is m1 over m1 plus m2 times v1 naught. There we go. And then with the y direction, we've got 0. This is my m1 v1 naught because it's, it's got no velocity in the y direction whatsoever times M1, big M2, well, they, they made it a big M, times V2 naught equals, once again, M1 plus M2 times V prime in the y direction. Hey, you do the same algebra, a little algebra trick again. Boom. That's not bad. Okay. Now's a good time to talk about well, we'll go on and do the next two problems, too, but um, on your exam for the Chapter 6 part, on your exam for the Chapter 6 part, since we're kind of wrapping up Chapter 6 here, um, I, I said you're going to have the Batman problem. Uh, we're not having the Batman problem. But we're having a problem that's, that's a little bit similar in that You've got a little girl, and she comes. She slides on the sled down a hill and gets going across a thing at a nice little constant velocity. Okay, and her friend comes running and jumps on her back. Okay, in the same direction. <laughs> Excuse me. I think it's hay fever. All right, you're so good looking. Anyway, did you all watch Seinfeld? Remember when they were trying to get that as the new thing after somebody seized? I'm sorry. All right. Okay. Anyway, now I lost. Oh, you got this little girl. All right, here's your problem. And this little girl's running in the same direction as her, as her friend on the sled, and she catches up to her and jumps on her. Guess what? It looks just like this, except this isn't zero. Okay? Except that this isn't zero, and you're going to have this and this, and you're going to just want to find that. However, I also ask you a tricky question. Is that an elastic or inelastic collision? Inelastic. Pretty inelastic, right? These two girls are on this, stuck together on this sled. All right? So that's inelastic. Now, do you think you could prove that it's inelastic? How would you do that? Could test the kinetic energy before. Does it equal the kinetic energy after? And it shouldn't. The 
kinetic energy before should be much greater than the kinetic energy after in an inelastic collision. All right, and then your second type of problem, your second type of problem is going to be a, uh, sorry, I thought there were garden gnomes coming up behind me there for a minute. Um, the second type of problem you're going to have is, um, oh, I know what it is, ball bearings, completely elastic collision. Crack, we did it with the elephant and the mouse. One of them's going to be stationary. The one that gets smacked into will be stationary. Can't have them both stationary, otherwise there won't be any collision, right? Sorry, physics joke. Okay. All right, so, you, so look up. It's in your book on exactly how to do an elastic collision, and they've got the formula for it. And once again, I'm going to ask you, is the kinetic energy conserved? Yes or no? Can you show that it is? All right. So let's go on to the last two here. This has been rather painless. Oh! Ooh! This one, of course! What I now look at this. Now look at the way they said this. This is ela collides elastically. It's an elastic collision. Does this look like an elastic collision to you? They made a mistake. They made a mistake. Okay, now. Yeah, and the masses are different and everything else. I think with your problem, because I've called this up several times, I think with your problem you're going to get the same numbers. Notice the masses are the same. This is a com I like this problem because it's a combo of two things are going on here. One, we've got a completely elastic collision. So there's a formula for finding the velocity of the second thing. If, if V2 initial was equal to zero, then the formula to find V2 uh, final is this. It's right here in the book. I've got it memorized. No, I don't. Oh, boy. Where did it go? Hold on one second. Uh, elastic collisions. Elastic collisions. Elastic collisions. Here it is. 2M1. over M1 plus M2, just like we did with the elephant and the mouse. V1 initial <laughs> times V1 initial, OK? So we find that, oh, but look what happens. The masses are the same. So if the masses are the same here, what's his velocity? Yeah. If the masses are the same, m1, m1 plus m1 becomes 2m1, so his velocity turns out to be the exact same. All right? Now, but how, <coughs> how far up the ramp does he go? We need to measure this distance up the ramp. OK. This is the nice part. So, we've, so we wind up with v2 final equals v1 initial. That's OK. So we'll go ahead and use this um, 2.8 meters per second squared. Now here's what I did. I said, all right, if he's going to go up this high, they said no friction. So since there's no friction, everything's conserved. So I can use this. I got so excited when they said no friction because I could use this. What's that? There we go. It's trying to, trying to make it go away, and it wouldn't. All right. Um, e naught equals E final. So therefore, it's coming in at 1 half mv1 naught squared. That's its, that's its initial kinetic energy. And then it's going to stop up here at mgh. Well, I'll be. I've got everything I need. Well, first of all, the masses cancel. 
and I get uh, h is equal to v1 naught squared over 2. Right? Over 2g. So I'm like, all right, but, but that doesn't give me this distance. Well, that's not too bad. The distance will equal h divided by the sine of 37. That was actually kind of a fun problem. I stole, I, and, and I didn't let you all do it. I, I apologize. But I gave you problems 5.6 in the last chapter, so that was good enough for fun problems to do and to share with your friends. <sighs> okay. All right. Now, now that's silly. You know what that's saying? That that problem was a difficulty of one. That's a, that's like the easiest problem. I, I think they I think they lost their mind. And we were supposed to be able to do that in one minute. Whatever. I don't see it. Okay, I, I think that's completely off. All right, the last one. Oh, this is one of my favorite problems. This is this one's fun. This one's kind of cool. All right, I'll just I'll just tell you right off the bat. Both answers are the same. But when you first read this, you're probably going, "Oh my, this sounds really hard." But it's not. You just got to think about it for a minute, or look up the answer like I did. No. Um, it says two skaters, all right, with a mass of 47, 61 kilograms and 47 kilograms are holding a rope. Have you ever done this, like on a pond or anything, and pulled? No? Okay. No ice skaters out there? All right. Oh, I forgot to show the Chris Farley ice skating thing at the Olympics. Anyway, um, did you ever see that on Saturday Night Live? Chris Farley ice skating. Anyway, um, so... Anyway, and they're five meters apart, and they're holding this rope, and they start pulling each other, okay? And what's going to happen? They're going to move closer. What point are they going to meet? Not in the middle, because one's heavier than the other. What it, what's the last thing we learned about in Chapter 6? Center of mass. That's where they're going to meet. And I forgot to bring, I've got a meter stick here, but this isn't a good meter stick because it's got a weight on the end. This is, a, this is a meter stick that's designed to show that this will actually fall a little bit slower than if it didn't have the weight on the end, which is weird, but it's true. Yeah. For sure. All right. But anyway, um, but anyway, if you take a meter stick and put it on your two fingers, put it on your hands like this, and then slide, bring them together, guess where they're going to meet? Right at the center of mass. And, and even if you have this one right here and this one way out here, you, your body will not allow it because it's got an infinite force. There's some like mysterious thing that keeps you from being able to move this, and this one will come, and then it'll go like that. It's weird. But it'll find the center of mass every time. So basically, all this is doing is you've got to find the center of mass of the system. So if we got the 61... Theoretical, theoretical spherical skater here, and we've got the 47 kilogram theoretical skater here, and their centers of mass are five meters apart. And we'll make this zero and this five, we just find the center of mass. And it'll be right here. And, and we do 61 times zero plus 47 times five. Divided by what? What? Oh, 108. Oh, okay. I hear what you're saying. Right. 61 plus 47. Okay. And that will give you this is XCM and this is 5 minus XCM. And that's your X for the 61 kilogram. And this is your x for the 47 kilogram. And it doesn't matter if, they, if, they, if one pulls or they both pull. That's what's going to happen. The only thing is if they both tug on it, what happens to the tension in the rope? Does it increase or decrease? 
it'll increase, so therefore it creates a force that's greater, so they'll accelerate faster, they'll just get there quicker, all right? But they'll wind up at the same spot. But if they both pull, the they'll, 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 one will just get there quicker. Well, that was fun. There's your homework, 10, okay? All right, now, let's talk about the, let's, oh, let's talk about the test by going to the very back, the last type of problems on the test, the last five points, or 10 points on the test, which covers a little bit of chapter seven, okay? Which you all did in lab, which was what? Uniform circular motion, okay? I'm getting no love here. I'm turning this off. <sighs> Excuse me. All right. No, it's actually been a good little projector. I just can't see anymore what the power button is. I think it's that one. Didn't do anything. Oh, because I pressed it again? Oh, you're supposed to press it twice. You're supposed to just be able to hit it with this. <laughs> Scotty, phaser's on stun, but that's not working. Oh, did it work? No. I, the light just got out of my eyes when I got underneath it. Okay, now I press it again. Yeah. <sighs> Thank you. All right. Okay. Uniform circular motion. The force, you got something going around in a perfect circle. Ooh, that's pretty good. All right, it's got a velocity like this. All right, it's got a velocity like that. Here's the center. Ooh, that was a little off center. There we go. It's got a radius of r. The acceleration is equal to v squared over r. Which way is the force going? What's the net force on this object if it's going at a constant speed around that circle? No. There's a force there. No. Oh, oh, no, no, no. It's not torque. It's not a torque thing. The engineer said out of the It's going, oh, wait. Yeah, it's coming out of the board. No, no, no. It's not a torque thing. Centripetal force. Which way is it going? Yeah. Well, yes. Towards the, all right. Sergio took a pole vaulter. Y'all got outsmarted by a pole vaulter. All right. There you go. There's the acceleration. It's going towards the center. So if you happen to see a satellite going around the Earth on your test and it asks you which way is the force going, what are you going to do? Pick the one that's going which way? Towards the center. That would help, just in case. <laughs> and you can call Safe Auto. No, you, you had to get those just in case. I, it took me like three football games to figure out what that commercial was saying. All right, okay. All right, now then. Okay, and we got one other thing. We can also find the, all right, if we've got a satellite that's got an orbit like this, it's got a big orbit, which is a, uh, well, I about said my B-A-N. I shouldn't say that, which is a big ass number, but it, it's, a, it's a large, because this is being televised, we gotta be careful. Um, it's got a large orbit, all right? Big number, right there, all right? Big number, all right? And I didn't teach this to you all, and it's kind of unfair to just all of a sudden bring it up. But anyway, we also have this big G that Newton found, universal gravitational constant. Do all, have you all ever seen that before? Heard about it? No. And wait till I put this number up here. 6.7 times 10 to the next. Now, this, you're learning this the day before the test, so isn't this fun? But it's all right. Uh, it'll be... Um, uh, meters squared divided by kilograms squared. That's the universal constant because two bodies, two bodies 
if they have mass, they exert a force on each other. It's a weird thing. We don't know why. Do we know why yet, Ting Yu? We don't know why. We just know it does. And by experiment, it does. Okay? Um, and anyway, and it's a very weak force, but it's directly proportional to, to two things, their masses. Okay? The force is directly proportional to their two masses. So that means that F is directly proportional to mass one. Don't write any of this down. This is just this is just when we're going to let physics flow over us for right now. Okay, okay, it's proportional to this, but it's also inversely proportional to the square of their distance. So if we put these two guys together, so the force there is proportional to m1 m2 over r squared. We need a constant in here to multiply it by to get it to to get us to an equal sign. All right, and so in other words. After doing many, 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 many experiments, just like you guys do in our lab, what are you always doing? You're always graphing things to try to find the slope of the line, aren't you? Trying to find the best fit line. Well, the best fit line for having two masses and their distances, which we can keep track of, the best fit line had this slope. Okay? So, F equals G times M1 m2 over r squared. Now, the acceleration is equal to, of an object, so ma equals g m1 m1 m2 over r squared. So, if we're standing here on earth and we want to find the acceleration that we feel, then that's g times the mass of the earth divided by r2 squared. Oh, I keep making mean this make this squared. There, r squared. I don't know why I was making it r2. I'm so used to the momentum problems. Okay? Guess what we would get if we took that mass of the earth, which is 5.98 times 10 to the 23, 24 kilograms. It's getting scary when you start remembering numbers like that. All right? times this guy, which I just remembered, divided by the radius of the Earth, which I think is 6.38 times 10 to the eighth meters. Something like that. I think that's pretty close. All right? And we square that. Guess what we're going to get for A? You've been using it all semester. Yeah, you'll get 9.8 meters per second squared. That's where it came from. But on your test, for five points, you got to you got a satellite, and I ask you what the acceleration is. And guess what? You'll be given this, you'll be given this, and you'll be given this. Find this. Can you do it? If you know how to work your calculator, you can. I should make you do it with a slide rule like I did back in the day. All right? That was after I'd walked backwards to school uphill. All right. It's there. Okay, so there. We've covered pretty much what you can expect from chapters 6 and 7. All right? Now, chapter 4. One problem, winner take all. All right. But it's broken down into five, like, or six pieces. It's worth 25 points, but it's broken down into five pieces. So I'll just tell you what's gonna, what, what you're going to expect. All right. So you don't panic. And remember, it's only 5% of your grade. All right? So, all right, you're going to have this mass 1, and you're going to have this mass 2. Now, this is what it's going to look on your exam, but actually mass 2 is greater than mass 1, even though it doesn't look like, but it's okay because it could be made out of lead or something, and the other one's out of wood. All right, so that would work. All right, now, there will be a little... What I ask you to do is to break this down. Basically, what you're going to have to do is find the tension and find the acceleration of the system. But through the way I've done the problem is, like the first part, the first question is, hey, find the sum of the forces on this block in the x direction. Well, you got t and you got f of k, right? And don't forget, what else is missing here? 
Well, yeah, oh yeah, there's a normal force and there's an mg, but I don't really ask you for that. But oh, I probably should because there's friction involved. And so f of k is going to equal mu k times m, m1g. I think that's m1. It might be m2. I don't know. All right, but anyway, um, and you also have, don't forget that accelerate. Yeah, somebody already said it. Don't forget that acceleration here. And when you do the, and I ask you to draw the free body diagram of this, the free body diagram of that, tell you what the, um, and then tell me the sum of the forces for this one in the x direction, the sum of the forces in the y direction for this one. And then I say, okay, do some substitution for your tension. Then do some substitution for your acceleration, and then tell me what the tension and acceleration. In other words, I, I kind of show you how to walk the dog to work one of those problems. All right? Because it's all F equals MA. Okay, now, chapter five. Energy, my, my, my most favorite stuff. Okay? First of all, there's a problem on it that maybe you haven't seen. Well, that's dirty pool, so let me show you what it's going to look like. And I want you to think about it. What if I have a mass screaming along at a constant velocity? Oh, boy. It's going to run into a spring. <coughs> All right. There's no friction. So what do we know if there's no friction and there's no air resistance? What do we got? What kind of, what, what happens to my energy? It's conserved. it's conserved. So what's going on before equals what's going on after. What's the only energy that's going on here? Kinetic, yeah. What's the only energy that's going on here before in the E naught part? He's in equilibrium, the spring. So he's at what? Zero, right? If he's just sitting there, if he hasn't been compressed, I think I said depressed on the thing. I said, no, that's people taking a test <laughs> of the spring. All right. So anyway, but after this thing comes to a stop, then he's smushed. Right? And then the only energy you have is what? The, energy, the final energy then is? Yeah, the elastic potential. So basically you wind up with this. One half mv naught squared equals one half kx squared. If you were given v naught and x, do you think you could find k? Do you think you could find the kinetic energy of the block? All that kind of stuff. The initial kinetic energy. Um, what about the elastic potential of the spring before it gets ran into? What is that? What would be the elastic potential of the spring before it's smushed? Yeah, can it do any work when it's just not smushed? Can't do any work. It's got to be smushed. Now it's got potential to do work. All right. That kind of stuff. All right. Then, then the last question. Well, the last question is actually that going around a circle satellite question. But the last, but, but the last question we'll talk about that covers the entire test is on page, it's problem 53. We did it in class. It's that roller coaster that goes from 5 meters. We'll see if it goes up to 8 meters. Okay, and it's problem 53, but I throw a twist in there. Everything else is the same. Um, I ask you what the difference in potential energy is between the top of one hill and the, diff and the bigger hill. That's pretty easy, right? Potential, gravitational potential energy, MGH type thing. I don't like it when I get blank stares. I say, that's not bad. I feel like, what do you mean? U, potential energy, MGH. I always called it this, GPE, gravitational potential energy. The book calls it U. 
I should have made that clear at the start. And if one's at one height, and it's the same mass and G, mg is the same, and at another height, that's the difference in the potential energy. You just subtract the two heights. Now don't say, well, one's at eight and one's at five and it's three. No, you still gotta multiply it by mg to get the energy. Okay, cool. And, but the trick that we didn't do in class, we found out in class that at the velocity they gave us, it didn't make it. I'll just tell you right now. I want to know what the velocity is that it can go from here to here, to get up to here. What does this have to be? And we'll assume that V final is zero, that it gets there and then goes down. Can you do that? I think so. Emily said she can do it. All right, so, so I feel confident that everybody else can. If we can do it, we can do this. All right. Good deal. Cool beans. Any other questions? There it is in a nutshell. All right. How are the labs going? What? They, they suck, man. All right. 